Yeah, the, the uh, obviously the surgery was, was a success. Uh, he's just, you know what, with some of our players, what we thought, he is such a grinder, and he is in that gym so long that we didn't want to take any chances. And so uh, that can be full go uh, within probably by the beginning of August, if not sooner. How will he be able to participate in the yep. Kevin Durant yep. game? Oh, oh, no, I don't think not so. Not Durant. No, no. He, I, I think his only plan, I know his only plan, is to stay here, go to school, and get ready for our trip. During the year, was there any sign that of some of that? Um, no, that was a you know in the last week uh, is when I first heard about something that you know now he may have complained at different times to teammates or whatever. But there's all kinds of aches and pains. But no, he's he didn't look like it certainly. Uh, those those last couple of rebounds he got. So it's a common injury of those. It's the uh, it's originally called the March. It's a I forget the the, the name of it. It's a March injury. It's from. Uh, Infantry marching, okay. continuous use, and he's in the gym so much. So maybe it's good he can be off his feet for a while. Is that something you'll look at with guys who are that dedicated well, it, to the it's, gym to try you know, to back yeah. off? No, it's it's going to happen with some people now and then, and it's the uh, it, it does happen. The stress fracture in the foot does happen, but we are we are really being cautious in, in his right hand. Is it left or right foot? You have to ask me that later on. Just saw him in the booth. Face to face before. Yes, but I'm not sure exactly. How are the plans going for the trip? They're going well. Got it, uh, They're going well. Yeah, you know we're a little bit schedule constricted because we have to wait till classes end, and then we start. Late, you know, Labor Day we have to be back ready to go. So it, it's only an eight-day trip, eight or nine days, depending on how you deem travel, and it's going to be good. Same thing we did last year: four games, eight or nine, eight days, sightseeing. Uh, practice. Lunch with the Pope. Lunch possibility, the, the audience with the Pope. Uh, I don't think that will happen, but uh, we'll take a try. We have, we're have we connected over there. Yeah. Just like the, the, the trip four years ago was important to bringing in that group of kids with such a big freshman class coming in and also with yeah. Mark being a red shirt, how critical is it to, to get some game action and to see what these guys can do in game type action to be yeah. able to figure out some of the roles? Right. The timing of it is perfect. Uh, if you remember four years ago, we weren't going to do the trip. It was the first year that the freshmen had been allowed to make the trips. So the timing was with the six and then Mark. It's perfect for us to go, and we'll probably have our hat handed to us on a couple occasions, but it will be good. It'll be good to practice as well. Uh, we'll have all the normal eight weeks of summer practice of two hours a week, but then we'll have ten days of unrestricted practice as well. So we'll mesh those two together, and I think that it will, it will be it will be great for us being over there, and will show us a lot we have. Uh, really determine a plan for us probably in the fall. I think the guy said something too about that helping with the chemistry of the team being able to. Oh yeah, those, oh yeah, no, yeah. Those weeks. I mean, and we we will have, you know, we'll do some things on the trip, such as room the freshmen with upperclassmen, try and teach our culture wherever we can, uh, and and travel and everything. There's no cell phones working, you know, there's be limited access to internet. It will be a tremendous opportunity for us to bond. Will you, even before that trip, have any uh, sense of guys stepping forward to, to take leadership in Yeah, yeah, we should, we should, we, you know, you can tell in the early practice drills who's picking things up, who can lead, and who needs to have a mentor, or a mentor with them. You know, who's, Spike, you need to spend more time with uh, this freshman. And we'll we'll go through that all summer long, as we see the, the great rules. Some of the great there's been so many good NCAA rules. The rules of allowing the freshmen to practice with us, go to summer school early, make these summer trips. It's got it's gone a long way for their assimilation into a college basketball. Let alone our culture. It's perfect for us the way we teach the culture. Have you talked to the big men, the young kids coming in, and about their opportunity now with Mitch gone and Jordan and John? Yeah. Um, we have, uh, with, particularly with Ricky Doyle, who has actually arrived here early and is working out on his own. Um, so he was done, he finished a while ago. So um, he's, he knows a little bit about it. And, uh, and then obviously that, you know, DJ Wilson is six feet nine, uh, not, not slated as a, as a, as a center, but uh, he, know, he can rebound and block shots, so. With Ricky, is it a matter of getting a 
shape and, and how yeah, far Yeah, I think there's a whole lot of things with every freshman, but yeah. the good, good thing with that we have all this time with them starting in, uh, from June 20th, I think, is when they begin their orientation, to all the way to August 15th before we leave for Europe. They're going to have great time to become oriented to the university. Ricky is here on his own, so what can, what's he allowed to do with John? He's, he's right allowed now? to work with John. He can't okay. work with us, though. And that's, that's good. And that was by his choice. I th his his, his uh, high school ended early, as it does down in the South sometimes, and he came up and he wanted to. He wanted to come up here and get an early start. So another good rule the NCAA allows him to work with John because he's assigned to NLI. When did he arrive? Uh, this week. Okay. This past week. When you heard uh, that, that your name was associated with the Pistons, what, what was your reaction? Oh, I mean, very little. Re very little reaction. Uh, you know, uh, there's many of our coaches that, that are out there that are, we watch basketball all the time. We're always infatuated with every part of basketball, watching a high school game to watching a college game, watching the guys that are scoring 158 points in a game. We're always, the basketball, we're always learning. So we always watch each other's games. But I, you know, the plan for me is to coach Michigan until 2019. Did they make any no. In informal or formal? No. Overtures? Did any of you refuse? No. Is that just a, com a completely different world? The, the jump? Because people talk about college coaches and the, the success or lack thereof that they might have in the NBA. Is that, do you view that as a completely different world in the NBA with players being a different no, type than No, college? I think there's a, especially with the players being younger and younger in the NBA, I think there's a, a great correlation in many respects. Uh, the 82 game schedule is that's obviously a different for players and coaches, but it's uh, this the, your summer is a different summer than we have right now. Uh, so it's there's a lot of things that that are very similar, and then obviously there's some big differences as well. He's got a year in now. So what areas do you hope that Derek Walton takes a jump this summer or works on? We have been, uh, and we just had a workout with him. We we're using the, the guys that are here in this first session. We're going to do a couple of our eight eight allowable weeks. We're using two with them, two or three with them right now. And uh, range on his jump shot. And when he first came here, he was a line hugger. He would had toes on the line all the time in practice, and just getting range. That was something that separated Trey Burke, uh, separated separated Nick Tim. They could shoot from really deep deep range. And he, uh, he just shot really well just now. So he uh, uh, that's the one thing, obviously, getting stronger. He, you know, he just had his ninth, 19th birthday. He's really young. So he, uh, uh, a lot of different areas, but one of the biggest things. But now you're going to need more scoring, and you're going to be a big part of that. We've seen the before and after pictures with Jordan Morgan. Is Ricky comparable to when Jordan first came in, or would you say he's a little farther ahead? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't seen him like that. You know, I haven't seen him. Obviously, I can't see him work out or right. do anything like that. So I, I can't. Yeah. Does John tell you? Jordan was. Jordan is a great <laughs> before yeah. and after picture. Right. I don't know if it's good or bad. We don't want him. He, you know, he put on some extra weight coming in here, which is common. Does Ricky have a comparable game to anybody who's been in the program? Is it similar to Mitch? Is it similar to? No, no. That is a great question. I, I think that he because he's got a. a now, Deshaun Sims had a great back-to-the-basket game, but was certainly a different type of athlete. Uh, but he could feel what was behind him, because we used to throw the ball into Deshaun a lot. Uh, but uh, Ricky's is, is, as I've said many times, is old school. He feels the game behind him. He's got really long arms uh, this way and this way, as, as long as we've, we've ever had. So that's going to be a, an asset for him, because he's He's not 6'10 or 6'11. He's, you know, almost 6'9, but with really long arms. Through your time, have you, do you know Stan Van Gundy at all? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I play, actually coaches, I think, all in one against Stan. Le Moyne versus University of Lowell, Mass, Mass Lowell. Obviously, you guys are in different circles now, yeah. but have you talked, I mean, in, over the years? Do you guys yeah, have oh, yeah, yeah. We stay in touch with both Van, Van Gundy's are mm -hmm. both, you know, the guy, they grew up in California. They. Um, his, their dad ended up coaching at Brockport, mm -hmm. and I was the coach at Nazareth. It was my first college game, four-year college game, was against uh, Jeff Van Gundy was the point guard, and uh, Bill Van Gundy was the coach. 
Are you, I mean, is there things about Stan that obviously the Pistons are going to benefit from? Oh yeah, I mean, he's he's a I, what I like about Stan is he's paid his dues all the way. You're the, you know, he's he's been a coach at several different levels. He's been in the NBA, but he's been in college. He's been at Wisconsin. He was at Canisius as an assistant. Uh, we our paths crossed uh, across a lot. So we can text back and forth. I congratulate him. It's a it's a great hire. Can Irvin take steps similar to Nick in going to the basket from year one to year two? Yeah. I really think so. He's, uh, uh, but what, what's common that the culture has been set here is we, we work really hard in the off season, and there's there's no other culture right now. And if you aren't into that culture, your teammates are not going to allow it. So uh, the workouts that I, I just it, just by working them out right now, they have been putting great work in through these last four weeks because they their numbers that they just showed me were way above uh, were, even where they were at the end of last year. So I'm really optimistic after seeing that. Karis had been planning on going to the Durant skills camp. I assume that's out. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is, is anyone else pursuing it or having we a chance to go there? Their no. Okay. Yeah, Cam Chapman's going to go to USA, right? He's going to USA basketball. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's going to happen. And see, he's got a window to make it. If he makes it, then he's, he'll be there for a couple of weeks. When do you get the freshman? June, June 20th, and then we can start working them out once classes start, which I think it's the 25th or 26th. How exciting is that with such a big class? It's oh, it's, yeah. we can't wait. I yeah. mean, this is a, it's like Christmas mm -hmm. when we go out there this first couple of days of just teaching them the basics of, of really college basketball. Not just maybe there, it, maybe it's unique to Michigan and some of the things we do. I don't know, but the basics of college basketball, and then at the same time, teach them, you know, Michigan basketball and even learning parts of the offense, given the fact we're going to go in August to, to Italy. When you have a group that size and you kind of balance coaching up the guys coming back versus teaching, you know, half the team and coaching. Yeah, the other guy, I, but I think that. this is different because we have we have Max and we have Spike that are have been through more than one year here. I think I'm accurate there. Am I not? Am I forgetting anybody? That's it, That's isn't it. it? That is junior or senior. And uh, so I think everybody's in the same boat. Max hasn't had that type of time. Spike hasn't had that much of time, so I think we're really, it gives us a great time to start again at ground zero and build everything up again. Obviously, some will be ahead of each other, but that's, it, it's not, there's not like two different, oh, there's veteran seniors and here's this young class. Everybody's pretty young. I mean, does, does it feel that way? Like you say that something like starting over, I mean, do you feel like it's literally you know, um, kind of a new I think script or new? Starting what? over because Team 99 is going to be very different because of the, the, uh, the three, the four, five losses. The five people have departed. So that's five guys that played in every, every game or was part of every practice like in Mitch's, Mitch's uh, case. So part of most practices. So yeah, it, I mean it's not starting over, but I think we have to, the foundation is there now. Now the, about putting the bricks back in are, are, is not going to be as hard as it was the, in, seven years ago, but it will be There'll be another building point for us, which is good. You re-examine so many things. The NBA teams who are calling about the three guys in the draft, what is, what's kind of your feedback you're getting from them, the vibe on the, each I'm, I'm, Yeah, I'm careful about what I tell, you okay. know, what I can tell people there, Mark, because, because it's confidential. But we are getting, you know, when you when you have one player going to the pros, you get a lot of phone calls. Can you imagine getting three? Okay. And it's from scouts and scouts cross-checking and things like that. There's We, we have a lot of phone calls. and. We are answering everyone at all at all different times, and it's. Uh, meanwhile, some of them are just got done playing or are playing. Some of them are waiting around. We're waiting for the lottery. Uh, I think it, as they do these workups, we'll hear more and more as well. And we you hear all the way up from the first line draft, from the first line um, talent scout, all the way to the GM. So oh really? It, it's the it goes. They're doing their work now. And it's interesting what they're looking for to help me grow. Did you learn some different things from those conversations last year and seeing how the draft went? To yeah, I think I'm learning every year. I mean, just watching the, the as, as being a, a, a coach who'd never coached at these levels, mm -hmm. um, you know, we had got there with, with Joe Alexander and Deshaun Butler we were getting there at West Virginia before I departed. But then now I'm more used to uh, the, the volume of calls you're going to get and what they're actually looking for. So, uh, and it's a good position to be in when you have players that are that good, which the pros are so interested. And Jordan Morgan's out there plugging away too. Jordan Morgan's got some 
has, he's going to have some workouts, and he is uh, he's he's going after with everything he can, just like he does everything in life. Do you have an opinion on the way it ended with Mitch and that you can share that you would share about the NCAA and, and how that went down? Yeah, I, I'm going to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm glad that it, it, the way uh, uh, Mitch just came forward and and talked really what happened and that he was going to move forward and that we're all with him and I think he's in a really good place right now. I think he's really practicing well is from what I hear and uh, there's going to be a lot of interest and he, as you all have seen, he's got a tremendous amount of talent and uh, I'm very confident he's going to have a very good NBA career. There are high expectations now for this program. Do you lower them at all? Uh, can you afford to do that now? Yeah, I mean, I... Do you, it's, you guys have the expectations. Mm -hmm. My only expectation is that we we're really working hard and that we're, going, we're, we're, we're educating these young men on and off the court and we're getting every bit that we can out, out of them. And that's the expectation. And uh, we're going to, those expectations sometimes have been uh, very profitable as far as our success. And that's the expectation. We're going to keep working hard in that. We'll change what we do as far as our schemes and our defense and our offense, we'll keep, keep changing to that. But the, as far as hard working and the way we, we conduct ourselves as student athlete, that's not going to change. What's the plan as of now, you think, for that, that one remaining scholarship? Yeah, well, it's always open. I mean, it's open until the last day that they'll admit somebody here. So it could be, you know, the day before classes start, if that could still happen to uh, any day. So we'll wait and see how it all goes. You could bring back some Italian kid when you go on. We could trip. do. We could kidnap. <laughs> we could kidnap and bring. You had back. looked at Europe though a couple of years yep, ago. Yeah. I mean, is that something you backed up from because you're having more success here? Or? Don't know. You know, I, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes uh, where at Michigan. I think this is a, this is not exclusive to only Michigan, but schools like Michigan. We have such a broad scope of where we can draw from. I'm not surprised we get calls from all over the world or and our success, plus our success, but also the state, but obviously the Big Ten footprint, which is growing larger and larger, is appealing. So we're, we are willing to look at anywhere from anywhere in the world. Is the, uh, any, any developments in the schedule for the next year? There's the yeah, it's, it's uh, I think all, all of the, most of the contracts, I think we're waiting for one or two contracts to be approved. And then we'll do what we do all the time, we'll announce a full schedule. Uh, I know others have leaked different things, and uh, we will announce a full schedule when we get a full schedule. Not the Big Ten, right? Mm -hmm. well, we, we usually do the. Have we done the non-conference before the Big Ten? Yeah, we'll do that again. But it's almost it's almost there. Any BCS? But I hate to say anything until that contract comes in. Are there any BCS games we don't know about? I don't know what you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you know, we're trying. I, I think the. the um, we're trying to usually have between 23 and 25 BCS games. I think that's been a good number for us. Okay. Uh, 18 Big Ten games, and then so that's four, five, six. You know, there are five, six, seven. You know, be uh, other games either through a, through the uh, exempted tournaments or home and homes. I think that's a really good number to have. When you, when you look at Karis, uh, the, the you know, obviously, the, put up the numbers last year. Now has kind of the hype and stuff going around him next year. How do you kind of view him? Was he a quiet, more on the quiet side, more reserved? It seems like you know, being taking that next step to being the the man. Essentially, is how he'll be viewed at least. Yeah, you know, I, I think that he. I mean, you. That's not his. That's not his persona to see himself as the man. And I, and to be honest with you, I don't think very few of our guys have been there. They're sort of like, you know, I'm a good player, and this is a team, and I'm a. I'm a strong link on this team, and that's how he sees himself, and that's how we'll use him. Uh, this 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 team has been, this program has had any success because of the team and not the man, and that's that's who we are. But Nick.